For your rectangle or square frames, you have the options of an artist canvas, stretcher bars, or you can make your own wooden frame using wood from a DIY store like Home Depot. This is a stretcher bar that I already put together. If you make your own, you would simply get wood, a two by one or one by one piece of wood and cut them in four lengths and then put them together. You just screw this end, the side into the end so it holds together. There'll be more instructions on something like that later on for one of the projects. So for a canvas option, this is a canvas that I bought at the store. You would simply take a flathead screwdriver and pry up the staples that you see holding the canvas. And to do so, you just kind of shimmy your screwdriver in till you get part of it up and then just pry up one side and the other side. I find that works the best. You pry one side and then the other side so they both kind of come out evenly and then they'll come out all the way. And you simply do that all the way around you, another option to use is a pliers or a wire cutter to get the staples out. Once you pry them up a little bit, you can use those to pry them out. That works pretty nicely. And then once you have all of the staples out all the way around, you take off your canvas, as I did earlier. You just take off the canvas and you have your wooden frame. Easy like that. To get your fabric onto your frame, you cut your fabric a good two inches bigger than your frame. And the reason for that is that the fabric, because it is a loose weave fabric, the strands are not bound together and they will so they can move for your punch needle get, to get through, which is a really good thing. But that also means that they're not bound together and that, so they fray really easily. So this, you can see, has already frayed quite a bit because it just, because they're not in there that good. So you want a good, at least two, sometimes three inch of extra fabric. So if it should fray, you still have enough for your project and it won't um, let your loose, your loops free. So for this, we're gonna do the same T1. I do the top, bottom, left, right. So you pull your, you, for the top one, you can just make your fabric go over. And then I'm gonna do half, some of this with a staple gun so you can see that. And then I'll do some of them with the tacks so you can see that. N normally you would do all of it in staples or all of it in tacks. But for today's, this way you can see both of them for one frame. And you simply just staple the one side. Do a good two, three. And then once you have that one, then you're going to stretch this one over before you staple. So you pull the fabric really tight, when it, as tight as you possibly can pull it. And you simply pull it this way tight, and then you pull it over like this. One hand will hold the project while the other hand can staple. And then from there, we're going to do left, right. So we'll go ahead and turn it because it's easier to work with. And for this one, because if you pull this way, it's going to be kind of crooked. I actually like to kind of pull it tight here like this as if it were already pulled and then I will attach one of the sides so I kind of pull it tight like this and then I will just hold the one side steady while I let the other one go so I can staple it So then when I go to do this other side, it will already kind of be over to the one side. So when I pull this one, it will pull it back into the middle. So then from here, pull it as tight as you can, right where the, across that. Pull it out and up and over. Hold on to it really good. And then use your staple gun, turn it a little bit to stay. And 
in, then you already have, your middle is already really tight because you got your T that's really tight that going for you. And then from here, I will go and kind of do the same thing like I did with the circle, kind of an X. So then I go in between where I already pulled. So I'll pull this one and this one, and then I'll pull this one and this one, and then this one and this one, kind of in the middle of where you already stapled, in the middle and to, to the side. And now I'm going to switch to the tacks. If you um, were doing staples all the way around, you would do the same exact thing that I'm going to do with the tacks, just use a staple gun. But now I'm going to show you how to use the tacks and show you how much easier it can be. And I went ahead and bought this nifty ball pusher, pen pusher, because it, it, make, it really does make it quite a bit easier. It's, it's not needed. You could probably put them in with your thumb. I like it. Okay, so from here we're going to pull this one up. And then I'm just going to push the pin into the fabric. It's that easy. It's really quite easy. And then I'll go do the bottom now. That same spot. I'm going to get my pin ready. It's doing really well. And so then from here, I'll do the middle of this one. Pull it up. Here, I just kind of checked it, kind of pulled that at the same time so I can make sure that they're even. And you'll just keep going around. So here you can see that I am putting my tacks and my staples really close together. You want to put them close together because where they're not close together, your fabric will be loose on your frame. So you, you do need to have a lot of staples in your piece or your tacks. So from here it is really quite tight. So there's a little soft spot there so I'm going to Finish off the corners here. So if you were going to remove this off of the frame when you were done, you would be done now. You could leave this just like this. It doesn't have to be pretty and you probably want the extra for whatever project you're doing. So if, if you were going to take this off of the frame, you would be done right now. If you wanted this to be your wall art and you're going to leave it in this frame and you're just going to hang this on the wall like this, then you're going to want to finish the corners as if it were a finished piece of art. And I would do that before you started so you wouldn't have this extra part getting in your way all of the time. And to do that, you're just going to trim your fabric down to the edge of your wooden frame. And we will trim the corners as well so you can have a nice pretty corner. It's a lot of fabric to get into a corner, so you're going to want to trim it down quite a bit. So I will show you one corner. 
And after I'm done trimming the fabric here, I'll show you one corner so you can see how it's done and then you can practice it on your own. A lot of this stuff just takes practice. We're trimming. Okay, so I trimmed quite a bit. See, there's not that much fabric. You don't want it to, to trim it too short, but you can trim quite a bit of it. And I will go ahead and staple this since it's gonna be a wall art. So I'll show you in a staple form. And you basically just kind of fold your corners over so it lays somewhat flat. You can't, as long as it's flat, you can't really do it wrong. So just kind of play with it and pull it until it's kind of tight. And then you just staple it. And there you have your corner. Nice, pretty corner. And then you'd, of course, do that to the other four corners before you would start. And that's how you do an artist canvas frame.